Hey gang, it's your old pals, Uncle Hank and Kippy. Just want to thank you for tuning in to Are You Garbage? Yeah, guys, make sure you subscribe. That way you get the episode as they come out. And you can also go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code AYG to get bonus content and get the episodes before they come out and HD streaming. Do it. Yeah. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Ooh, baby! Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage, the show where we sit down with your favorite comedians and find out if they grow up classy or if they're a complete piece of shit. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a glorious day here at Gas Digital Studios in the fucking East Village. It's nice and cool. I can feel the fall coming. I can taste the fucking turkey on Thanksgiving, and I'm excited. My co-host coming at you right next to me, a little too close. If he was any closer, I'd be fucking pregnant. This guy. Gang, the next time you reach for a best pal, you go ahead and make it a kippy. Give it the fuck up for Mr. Kevin James Ryan, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, we appreciate you listening to the show, watching. You can uh, make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. And also, full video is available on YouTube. You can subscribe there as well. And you can use promo code AYG to sign up for Gas Digital Network to get all the shows on the network and a bunch of cool shit as well. Yes, sir. Thank you, Kippy and gang. We could not be more excited to have our incredibly special guest here with us today via satellite technology. He's a huge get. We got him on the big screen, gang. This gentleman is a comedian, a podcaster, an actor, and producer. You have seen him on This Is Not Happening, The Late Late Show, The Joe Rogan Experience, Bachelor, and of course, he is the host of honeydew podcast but the big question in everybody's mind today is he garbage and i don't know he looks like a detective <laughs> that got caught up with the bad people <laughs> ladies and gentlemen give it up for the one the only mr ryan sickler oh all right yeah <laughs> thank you guys buddy That's thank you so much for doing the show man we're happy to have you here Thank you for having me. Um, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. And I can tell by, I can tell you right now, I know the answer because the shit you got on the shelf behind you, that's <laughs> 10 times more than we had in our fridge and cabinets. We just bought this at the bodega about an hour ago, by the way. And it better be here next week, I'll tell you that. You do look like a detective that would be on the take right now. I can say that. If I was a detective, I would. You could definitely put me on the take. <laughs> oh, I would turn a blind eye to a lot of shit. Keep me the too, neighborhood bro. safe. That's about as far as I yep. would go. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for doing the show. So, like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you a series of questions to determine whether you're garbage or not. But before we get into that, I'm just curious. Uh, where'd you grow up? How'd you grow up? Give us the whole. Uh, give us the whole origin story. The backstory. My origin story, I'm originally from Baltimore. Um, That's I, a tough one. Uh, he looks so like he's on the shitter right oh, now. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm here in the studio in this damn sideways cam. Here we go. Um, grew up in ba I'm from Baltimore originally. Uh, parents divorced, bounced around. Grew up out in, uh, in the county, in Carroll County, Maryland. Split homes, uh, mostly by, raised by a single dad. Uh, who worked. We were latchkey kids. I say we. I have a twin brother, fraternal ah. twin brother, and a younger brother. Um, so, you know, three boys basically being raised by a single dad. Mom's not really around, in and out, running around a little bit. Um, they divorce just like summer of fifth, between fifth and sixth grade. We live with my mom for a year. They decide to get back together. Mm -hmm. um, you know that for the kids bullshit. Yeah, and that, that always not, works. Yeah, it, we're not going to need any questions. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I like how I like how he referred to it as the county too. Like we knew, like I knew what fucking county he was talking. About. Yeah, down there in the county, you guys know fucking the county. There's one county. I love it. Yeah. When you're when you're God damn it, oh, <laughs> when you're look, see, I'm sorry. No, when you're right. from. Baltimore, or you're either from the city, or you, they all tell you, ask you, you from the county, you from the <laughs> county. Um, so, single dad, um, and then when I'm 16, my father dies of a heart attack. Uh, we find him dead in the morning. Jeez. 
Um, we, our mom still is like, nah, his mom, our grandmother comes to take care of us for a little bit. Um, and then at that point, the state, uh, we're minors. So we had to go somewhere and mm -hmm. we end up moving in with our mother who left us alone. Um, just, we raised ourselves from 16 all the way through school. My, my twin brother, myself, um, and, um, yeah, once we turned 18, my mom kicked us out. She was never home or around. Jesus. So we moved, yeah, so we moved in with my grandma, the same grandma, who was just awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. just a fucking awesome woman. She dropped dead of a heart attack right in front of me Jeez. at 90. I, was, I gave her mouth-to-mouth -mouth and CPR, and I did a good job. She was alive when she left the house, but did not wow. make it. Holy That's shit. That's why my uh, on my Instagram bio, I'm three for four saving lives. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, he's got his record on the gram. Hey, those are all-star numbers. Don't, don't feel <laughs> bad. Three, Hall of Fame Dude, numbers. Hall that's of good. Fame numbers. Holy, Holy shit. You're like fucking Superman in my book. I was going to lead off to see if you ever had Lunchables growing up. You hit us with fucking the shameless rewrites. Holy shit. That's a fucking tale. First of all, I'm sorry that happened to you. Thanks, man. Holy uh, after she wow. died, we had an uncle who came in and basically was like, man, fuck everybody. <laughs> we were thrown out. Um, I lived with my grandmom's sister, my Aunt Marguerite, for a little bit till we found our own place. I say we, my, my twin brother and I got a place for a year. And then um, after that, I moved out here and I've been here ever since. So that's my nutshell story right Damn. there for you. What happened to the twin brother? Uh, he currently um, lives in Delaware with his wife and my niece and nephew. He okay. um, he manages an auto salvage company, so he's in charge of all the aluminum recycling. All he can get that you a shit. headlight if you need one for sure, <laughs> buddy. Get and this he, down into a treatment. I like it. They do crazy shit, like you know those. You, you see those tractor trailers go down the road with the the cars all squished down yeah, on them. Yeah. And shit. He does that. Then they'll take those cars. They'll bring it to his place. They melt them down into these aluminum pallets, and then they sell the aluminum for profit. Um, and then it basically goes overseas, and they make big razors out of it, and it comes right back. We pay forty dollars <laughs> and fucking razors. They used to be a Buick Skylark, <laughs> <laughs> the classiest of the Buick, by yeah, the way. <laughs> Something in a four door, my, my, please. Not garbage. He is a scientist for the government. He works. He's not in the army, but he works for the army in Maryland. He's married with three kids, actually. Now, let me ask you this: because first of all, I would never have had. I was raised. You know, I was babied my entire life. I would never have had the wherewithal to overcome shit like that, which is fucking amazing and commendable to all three of you, especially with all three as you're successful and doing good. But does something like that experience, like, would you say that you guys are super close now and try to create a really strong family environment for, like, your nieces and your nephews? Or do you, are you guys kind of scattered? Well, a little bit of both, honestly. We're, we are, my brothers and I are very close. We talk right. all the time. Um, and, you know, any of the kids' moms will probably tell you we're a little harder on the kids but it's also because we know that at any fucking second, that shit could be ripped away from you. And you yeah. better fucking step up and be somebody. And not yeah. just a stick, not just a fucking, you know, loser, not just a glom on. So my, my twin brother started before all of us did. Um, so my niece and nephew are now, got I think, 13 and 11. My younger brother, uh, my daughters will turn six in October. My younger brother's kids are seven, five, and he's got a one and a half year old. So those kids are much closer in age. Um, but yeah, we, we, you know, I'm still friends with my cousins who were 10, 15 years older than me. So it's harder to do that when I'm out here because I'm in California. They're still in, and my one brother's in Delaware and the other's in Maryland. So it's close, but they, know, they need to be closer. That's that's a really good question. They should be closer. Okay, because I figured something like that, either you're going to go two different ways from it. You're going to recognize the importance of family and having like a support system and, and go that route, or you just don't really talk to each other at all. That's good that you guys still held no. on through all that. 
I mean, we were literally laying there on the bed together with our dad's dead body and my brother and I are, I'm breathing life into my fucking grave. I mean, I'd never, and I had just, just gotten a, to be a lifeguard. I just took all these fucking CPR classes and shit. And here I am having to fucking use it on my grandmother. I never used that shit on any motherfucker that got in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you slip in the shallow end. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah, diving for rings. I ain't coming in to get you. You shouldn't have been diving. <laughs> I'm not messing up my hair to dive in for you. I'll tell you that. So when when was it completely? And what kind of shock is that? Like when you're a kid, when like your mom splits like that. Like when was it normal up until you said fifth, sixth grade? No, it was a little before that. I'd say normal, what you would say normal. It's never been normal. Like yeah. my mom's mom, my, she lived with us early on too. And now you look back and it's like, oh, we had a really nice house. Um, and she lived there to help pay for that fucking house. You know what I mean? So we always had something different going on. But normal, I'd say right around third grade is when when they started having, for, for me, you know, that age, they started having trouble. When you started and I remember that. asking. In, in students in third grade in my class, hey, are your parents divorced? Because I we felt like these outcasts. But then then you realize, shit, the people whose parents were together were were the ones that were in the smaller uh, statistical group. Yeah, and sometimes and when they stay together, it fucks up even up. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that stay together for the kid shit don't always work. Yeah, Uncle Hank's a product no. of that. I'll tell you, I would have been gone. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. <laughs> I'll say this, though. It is garbage to have, uh, like, a grandmom or an aunt or something like that live with you. But when you're a little kid, that's so cozy. Because they fucking, you know, they dote on yeah, you. Dude, they it's spoil like a, you. It's like a clubhouse. You know what I mean? There's just uh, a bunch of people hanging around, you know? It's like yeah. more people to do shit with, more people to take care of you or make dinner and shit. I love that shit. My whole family's Italian. So my grandmother um, spoke Italian fluently in the home to her sister's. And to this day, I'm bummed I didn't sit and learn that fucking language. Because I know she was talking shit about everybody. None of us <laughs> oh, yeah, that. dude. She was probably holding court. We openly talk shit about what was going on and not have to hide or leave or go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I wish I spoke a second language That's the way to just to it. trash people. Something odd, too, like Korean or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just being a green room fucking shit <laughs> on the guy next to you. Nothing better. What did you pick up from your grandmom? How's your uh, how's your Sunday gravy at the Sickler house? Um, well, I picked up. So that was my mom's mom that lived with us earlier. I was much, much closer with my dad's mom, who later I lived with and, right. and tried to save. Um, but what I got from all of them was what you asked me about before. Like, I, you know, these people literally died for us. And mm -hmm. there was no way. I was going to let their life be wasted or, you know, be that drug addict or mm -hmm. alcoholic or dead in a ditch. I mean, I should be. I should be dead in a ditch. I should have been long. I I'm amazed. Been long, but all three of us, you know, it was more about, you know, living the way our father and grandmother had instilled in us. Mm -hmm. And what ultimately ends up happening, I've reconnected with my mother and I've talked to her about this. I'm like... We made you look good. You know what I mean? You didn't have shit to do with that. But mm -hmm. we did what we were supposed to do for the people uh, we wanted to do it for. And ultimately, we ended up making you look like a really good parent. And you weren't. Yeah. You know? Ouch. So what I got was integrity. I got heart. I got hustle. You know, don't be allergic to hard work. Mm -hmm. But what I did modify was taking a blue-collar work ethic and applying it to a white-collar world. Yeah, for sure. Um, and not keeping that in the blue collar world. There's something about that blue because same thing. Both of our families, blue collar, yeah. construction and stuff like that. It's like when that's instilled in you in a, in a young age. There's just something, you, especially when the family unites like that with that blue collar work. It's like put your head down and just fucking go. It's got to get done. It's going to get done. Type mentality of like you have no mm -hmm. other choice. It's either like you said, like just let go and become a statistic, or fucking push through until you know the next level. And the fact that. Not only did you push to the next level, the fact that you're fucking killing it now I know. is, you know, it's fucking awesome, dude. That's nice. I don't always feel like I'm killing it, but that's nice of you to say. You hey, should be coaching my, wrestling or something. I'll, <laughs> I'll, take you hot, I'll take hot gym coach. I want to be hot. <laughs> I mean, that was a powerful uh, fucking speech. I was ready to get up and start doing some burpees on that. <laughs> I was fucking... <laughs> 
fucking Coach Sickler coming in yeah. the fucking streets of hard knocks. Yeah, I, my father was a crew chief at Pan Am, and his Damn. father worked at Bethlehem Steel in Baltimore. Yeah. So they're blue <laughs> guys, and, you know, they uh, – my. Both were in the military. I was not. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not the man I fucking were at all. So the least I can do. And it's been actually pretty fucking awesome to sit here and on my own show and, and, and shows like yours and to sit here and talk about these people that meant the world to me because it's the only way to keep them alive. You know, they, yeah. they would love to fucking know I was talking about their ass on these shows. Sure. Believe me, my grandmother, what did you say about me this week? You know, <laughs> that's funny. funny. They were characters, you know. I definitely know. I am a I am a much watered down version of my father. I can tell you that. Oh yeah, I don't even <laughs> fucking. It's, I'm it's... barely a man. I'll be honest with you. We're sitting. There's three of us <laughs> s- sitting here talking into microphones about real men. That's what we're doing. Yeah. But that's good. All right. We got that's a fucking amazing backstory. So that just kind of gives us an idea how to kind of like tailor the question specifically to you. Um, I'm interested in a couple of uh, things about when you're when when you were living with your dad, like how he made it all work. But now I, I'm more intrigued about how you run your house. Yeah. now, And like and, and like what your habits are now. So we're going to launch into a series of questions here. We're going to play a little game called Are You Garbage? Uh, just answer the questions as openly, as honestly as you have been, which is fucking fantastic. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I don't know if you're garbage or not, but I fucking love you. Yeah. I'll be rooting for you in the movies. <laughs> fucking remake Rudy and put the kid in. I'm fucking hooked. <laughs> I'm about to way, put him on. You see the Joe Montana shit all over? Yeah, I saw that, that today. He, he said, was he carried out on the people's shoulders? Yeah, by three of the pranksters on the team. Did yeah. He, he just shit. All over it. He's like, dude, he popped that Rudy bubble. If you, yeah, he took all the Hollywood out of that fucking movie real quick. He sure did. He shit all over that. He's a Notre Dame guy, too, I believe. He was on the team, I think. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was there. That's what he was saying. He goes, that's all bullshit. They put him in for 10 seconds. He, well, like, oh, he was on that fucking team? Oh, I didn't know that. That's what he's saying. I mean, that's the thing. He's going, I was there. It was all bullshit. Yeah, and I banged his girl afterwards. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, Joe, like Joe Montana's got to take this win. What the fuck, yeah, Joe? Relax. Right. Gotta, come on, Joe. Put your sketchers on. And stuff. <laughs> More of a Dan Marino man yeah. myself. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Pair of isotoners around the holidays. Holy shit. Also, too, obviously, you're free, you know your ba- your background's a little checkered. You know what I mean? It wasn't all fuck. You didn't grow up as like a Rockefeller. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, that's not going to determine whether you're garbage or not. But you have those roots. Like you were definitely, you know, you were. So you have garbage roots. And we found out, regardless of money, of fame, of you know success, you there's only so much one generation can do to shake the garbage out. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like. Your kids yeah. are going to be a little bit better, but they're going to still have tendencies. So it's 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 interesting to see how what you've been able to shake. Maybe you got even more trash here with a little bit of cash. Your Ricky Bobby did. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see. All right. Let's. Now, are you married? Are you are you married now? I am not. I was engaged originally. We broke it off. Well, she broke it off, and uh, I have a five year old daughter. I've been a single dad for the last. Well, she's about to be six, so the last five years. Your daughter lives with you. We have 50-50 split custody. Nice. I will not fuck. Um, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way. Of course, I got I you. Okay. All right. Um, how do you want to start this off? What are you thinking? I think we still got to go with the with the basics growing up. Okay. Let's go back before uh, before the, there, there was trouble. Um, just to get an idea, what was the name of the street that you grew up on? I know you moved around a lot, but the first first street. The house that I told you about that that I'm not gonna include the city. I'll include when we got out to the county because that's county, where baby. we Yeah, that's where we planted the flag <laughs> stayed out there. Um, but that would be Iron Gate. Iron Gate Circle, actually. It was wow. a circle. A cul de sac man. No, that's what that's what I didn't know this either. It was um, a loop. It was a we called them we called them courts where I came from in Maryland. If you a cul de sac was a court, go play, play in the court, play in the court. But a circle, which I'd never even known either, was just like a horseshoe, and it went yeah. from one side to the other side, and they called it Iron Gate Circle. That sounds pretty. That classy. sounds pretty classy, man. Iron Gate. That circle. just bumped corner, up the story. Iron Gate 
Bartholo. Corner of Iron Gate and Bartholo. That Ooh, was the corner. That's pretty. That sounds pretty ritzy. Sounds pretty nice, man. Um, it all what, went downhill from there. Bro. <laughs> oh man, those were the days, though. Now I picture you guys was, fighting over your dad's estate and shit like that. <laughs> I was my. That was my pipe wrench, motherfucker. <laughs> Um, what, uh, what kind of house are we talking? Was it like a single family, duplex, apartment? No, this was a house. This is why it was my favorite. This was Mm -hmm. before shit hit the fan and we ended up in the apartments and all that shit. This was a split level. Um, you walked in, you could go upstairs to like a nice, um, so I don't know houses enough, but it was a whole like parlor area with the kitchen walk through dining room up another level to one, two, three bedrooms. Yeah. One of those bedrooms had a full bath. There was another full bath in the hallway. When, when you walk in to the right was my parents' master bedroom downstairs, excuse me again to a basement. And then ahead was the whole living room, huge yard, like, like riding mower yard, garden, Ooh. shit be built, all that. Like, you know, you gotta you gotta have a taste of it for a little bit before you realize how you know shitty it's about to get. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a good slice of America right there. Nice it does. Little, yeah. The only thing, the only thing working against you on that, you got the yard stuff like that. But the, I, there, I'm hearing too many levels. This is like an M.C. Escher painting, and I the the kitchen on the second floor. Yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one right there. Yeah. That's a little garbaggio, my friend. And the, the master was, bedroom on the first floor. Basement was not done. <laughs> basketball, basketball court in the driveway, like Ooh. right in the driveway. You had to move cars to play. Ah, know. that's the best. Did you have a chain net or was it a, was it a mesh net? That was a mesh. It was All a mesh. right. You start the chains, it's fucking street ball time. <laughs> Dude, I those were those were at all the playgrounds because everyone kept taking the fucking yeah, they yeah. Still had to bolt out. them down. Yeah. Dude, my mom still to this day, I think I've mentioned on here before, still has a chain net in our fucking driveway. It's like fucking <laughs> Rucker Park in there. Yeah. Dude. It's wild. There's nothing worse than playing a pickup game with no fucking net. You feel like you're in the prison yard, man. Yeah. Russ rattling off every time. Yeah. Chain net swish sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sounds like two knights fighting in medieval times. <laughs> sounds like someone's getting stabbed at lunch. Holy shit. All right. Okay. And what about another basic here? All right. So we got the street. What was the name of the grocery store that, let's say, your dad went to while he was trying to keep it all together after your mom was gone? That would have been George's. That sounds, sounds pretty, pretty nice. Respectable. I don't know it. How was your pop in the kitchen? My dad, you know what I've always found, especially about military dads, is they kill breakfast. I don't oh, know what it is. Yeah, they're all maybe they were up early. I don't know what it is, but I if if my friends asked me to spend the night, I would always ask, "Was your dad in the military?" Like, yeah, like, yeah like, give me your dad's oh, rank before I commit. I want to know what he was, dude. This guy breaks my balls all the time. My dad was in the fucking Navy. He was a cook in the Navy. And exactly what you're talking about. My mom can make every meal every night of the week. But come Sunday morning, the big guy was behind two cast iron skillets fucking frying up some canned potatoes and some fucking dippy eggs. And they were out of the park. Fantastic. My dad was a good cook. Steaks, burgers, and we all, you know, we're Maryland through and through, so we would steam crabs and seafood Ooh. all the fucking time. Like, that is something I, that's all over my IG. I still do that. I mean, it's, I can't. I just love, I love, look, I am a backyard mm-hmm. crab feast, barbecue, oh, yeah. fucking hang out, horseshoes, beer, and weed guy. That is who I am. You get the newspapers rather... out on the table, dump a bushel out, everybody's got a screaming cold Coors Light. Fucking good yep. night. I'm, rather, I'm much out there with the kids, playing some kickball, kicking the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> talking sh- going yard. <laughs> yeah. Coach Sickler goes yard about- again. I'd rather that than to go to any premiere party or any of these fucking red carpets I've ever done. I'd much rather that. That is who I am. I also imagine you probably don't take it easy on the kids and like let them win when you're in a fucking <laughs> showing yeah. them how to play horseshoes for 20 bucks a throw. They already have it better than I ever had it. So you're going <laughs> to learn to lose. Yeah. You're going to learn to be a great. 
Ungrateful bastards. Ah, I love that. You're coming up fucking all class with me right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I Even got, with the horseshoes. <laughs> yeah, a horseshoe pit in the backyard is fun, but it's trash. <laughs> if you're taking the refund check and putting in a horseshoe pit, you, get, you should be making some better investments. <laughs> oh, when you were a little kid, the first time you saw adults throwing horseshoes and being like serious about it, you're like hearing that clank, like, what the fuck? Yeah, a couple of Michelobes going oh, around. Oh, man, Ooh. that's a fucking man's game right there. I got one along that line. Does anyone in your family or you ever own your own tap for a keg? Yeah, I had an uncle that had a kegerator. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's nice, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's let's, clean living. Let's ask you this. This is a big one here uh, on Are You Garbage? Now, if you didn't have one, you're still high up in the points, so don't worry. But at the house in the circle... Did you guys have a, a garage? No. Actually, no garage. Um, I'm trying to think. We lived in a shitload of houses, and I'm trying to think. I don't know if any of the ones we had. Maybe when we lived in Texas for a hot second, we had a garage. We went down there for like a year, or my dad got transferred, but we were there for nothing. But mm-hmm. Ooh, no, transfer it was, move. And, and, and this is gonna this is not gonna help my points any. It was a it was just an outside driveway. But but I've had multiple gravel driveways. <laughs> oh. Oh. They're the best when you tear out on one of them multiple and your parents are freaking out. Driveway. Oh, dude, those are a tough look. Let me ask you this. Would they get it re-graveled every couple of years and they'd show up with a dump truck and you'd have to smooth, nah. smooth it out? <laughs> nah, we played as is, uh. Daddy O. No. My buddy's dad, every couple of years, he would get fresh gravel put in, and he'd have us out there on a fucking Saturday raking it like we were on a fucking chain gang, smoothing it out. (laughs) So what I was trying to find out is anywhere in any of these houses, was there a second refrigerator maybe in the basement or in the house that was strictly for sodas, beer, and ice pops? Yes and no, actually. No ice pops. Yes, there was. Uh, we had a deep freeze in the house Ooh. that my father died in. Okay, we had a deep freeze, and in here we go. This will help your points. In that deep, freeze, <laughs> oh god! So we you put to, your dad oh, for a couple go, of days. <laughs> we used to go crabbing all the time. We had a little uh, John boat. We'd go out into the Y River off the Chesapeake, and we'd run trot lines. And the bait would be bull lips. You go to a butcher, you get the lips from bulls. You you put them on every three feet, uh, yards, excuse me, and boom, we're crabbing, okay? Well, Damn. you don't throw 100 yards of bull lips away because you can use that all summer. So what you do is you coil it into a oh bushel basket. God. Then you take that stank-ass trot line and you put that in the deep freeze. So we would keep our trot line in the deep freeze, any venison, yeah. you know, my dad hunted. But I, actually, when we got older, he didn't, but he still had friends. So we'd have some deer meat. Um, things like that. So not soda and, and freezy pops and shit like that. We had man shit. Had man <laughs> yeah, shit. not the pussy shit. Yeah. Believe me, I got the message. I stink. <laughs> Fair. I'm looking for a Capri Sun. You got fucking gopher ass in there. That's fucking, that's a man right there. I've never heard anybody talk about buying bull lips. That's Holy fucking shit. wild. Yeah. Damn. I kind of wish he was here so you could smack our heads together. I know. Clunk us like two coconuts. <laughs> I, dude, I ain't never had no fucking high C cooler, fat boy. I'll tell you that. Oh man, my we got one. We got one of the. We got a deep freeze cooler too, and uh, we my my stepdad keeps baiting there for crabbing and shit like bunker and shit like that. So any meat or chicken, and whenever you start cooking, it smells like you're at a fucking bait shop. I'm like, I ain't eating this. I'll go to McDonald's before I eat this bunker steak. <laughs> How about throwing a French bread pizza in there to fucking? I know. Bring up the real estate a little bit. Yeah, those deep freezers, Woo! they don't they don't do good with smell. That that shit bleeds. And let me follow that up with this because that's such a staple and you seem like such a man's man growing up, would you have milk with dinner? No. Yeah, thank wow. you, Mr. Sickler the gentleman. Jesus, might be turning I'll talk about what we much of soda because my father again, he worked at the airport. He'd come home with a garbage bag of <laughs> fucking Braille, Coca-Cola, Sprite. We drank way too much soda growing up. Way too much. What? Taking it from the airplanes? Mm-hmm. The, were they the little little baby cans, the little mini ones? So, we get some of those, too. But you asked me about the freezer. 
but now you remind him. So we never put that shit in the freezer. We just kept that in trash bags in the basement, and then we would just put ice in a glass and, and drink drink a soda. <laughs> it's in the tiny kept, little cup. We kept, we kept dead animal parts in our feet. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no room for Shasta in there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Holy exactly. Uh, God damn. This guy's from is the this fucking... common knowledge? This is a crazy fucking story, man. I love this. This is my story. This it is... feels normal when you're living it at first, I'll tell you. You don't realize how different it is till you go over to your friend's house and you're like, hey, you guys get hugs? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ain't that the fucking truth? Woo! Okay. God damn. Uh, um I feel like I might I might get you with it. anybody do you know anybody that ever played semi pro football? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. You're talking to one <laughs> fucking to... tight end. Actually, it's actually professional football. So, well, I'm friends. I'm friends now with Orlando Brown Jr. from the Ravens, the right tackle. Oh, the, damn. Okay. The great line on the greatest rushing uh, team in the history of the sport. But also, I went to high school with a guy. I'm still friends with him. His name's Mark Orlando. Shout out to Mark Orlando. <laughs> he was a wide receiver. So, <clears throat> long story short, Baltimore loses the Colts, um, and we get we get a USFL team called the Baltimore Stars. Right. Well, the Colts had championships. This is why Baltimore is the greatest football city <laughs> in the history of football. He's saying okay? that like it's not even close for debate. This yeah. is fact. And when I go through this very quickly, you will be like, you're right. Okay, we had the Baltimore Colts, who – Predated Super Bowls, they won NFL championships. They also won Super Bowls, okay? Super Bowl. They went to Super Bowls. Johnny United, right? Exactly. <laughs> then, also, in, actually, in the 1970, um, they won. So then they leave town. We get the Baltimore Stars, a USFL team. They win the championship. Damn. They leave town. We get a Canadian football team called the Baltimore Stallions. And to date, the Baltimore Stallions are the only U.S. team to ever win the Grey Cup championship. They leave town. We get the Ravens, who have won two Super Bowls. Every fucking team in football that we have had come to our city has dominated and been to the mountaintop, period. There are not, there's not another city that's ever had a Canadian team. Who's won a championship? Yeah. So automatically, Baltimore, in every fucking version of football, yeah. has hit the mountaintop, and it's why it's the greatest football city. Now, Mark Orlando wasn't semi-pro. He was actually a pro, and he was a receiver for the Stallions who won. He was on the team that won the Grey Cup. Damn, Damn, that's pretty flawless fucking. I got you can't even know that. I don't even know anybody that could rebut that at yeah, all. You can't argue with that. I just feel bad. Everybody keeps leaving town on you. Your fucking mom, <laughs> fucking football teams. Can't get anybody to stay Lamar, and get this guy a fucking hug. Jesus Christ. Lamar Jackson better not fucking move anywhere. God forbid if something happens to that kid. Oh, I love him. I'll be honest with you. He's a fucking good kid right there. I'll tell you that. Man, it's just have someone like that on your team because i love i love football so i'm a big fan of a lot of guys but mm -hmm. to have one like that on your team where you're like fuck yes yeah Thank and he's God. a fucking good dude he is yes all right holy shit what a fucking tale we are spinning here what was your first car because you were Ooh, out on your own pretty quick First car I paid five hundred dollars for it was a nineteen eighty two Toyota Corolla Tercel. Oh. It was a <laughs> people argue with me that there wasn't a Corolla and a Tercel. There was. <laughs> I've had to prove it online. There fucking was. It was blue. It was matte paint. It didn't even have a finish. I bought it off my um, high school soccer coach's son. And I, what I didn't know, the fuel filter had a hole in it. <laughs> and my buddy and I drove it all the way to the beach, and this thing's spitting gas right into the vent. We were so fucking tired when we got there, but we didn't know why. Everybody's like, wow. Oh, we're like, we're going to take a nap, man. We're exhausted. Uh, got we three brain cells it. left. I used to jump that car. We used to jump that shit on, <sighs> on roads that had big hills. We'd all get out and jump our cars. <laughs> Holy that my shit. First. That reminds me. You, you don't see this too much, but asking somebody for a jump, 
Do you have? Do you remember having to do that shit? I don't think like mm-hmm. anybody would do it for you now. Who the fuck? Somebody asked me for a jump. I'd lock I'd the doors. Like, Get your shit together. Yeah. You're not yeah, fucking putting that, that on my car. No. Blow my shit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you don't know how to t- treat your car. You're not touching mine. How many miles were yeah. on that Toyota in the end? Do you remember? I don't remember on that one, but my favorite car, which was my second car, was a 1990 Honda Civic with original rims, and I put 275, 280,000 on that car. God damn. That's Dude, fucking something that was, else. My those, favorite. Yeah, those foreign cars in the 80s and 90s, you'd put like fucking 2 million miles on them and then fucking sell it to a high school kid. They ran forever. Yeah. yeah. It's a lawnmower. Yeah. Gang, we know everybody's going through a tough time right now, but I'll tell you what, we've got the cure, and of mm-hmm. course, we're talking about dickatyourdoor.com, gang. Holy cow, folks, let's face it, everyone's bummed out right now. So why not send your loved ones or your enemies some delicious chocolate <laughs> dicks? Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. ultimate face all right there. <laughs> Check out what I'm working with. <laughs> Mine would be a morsel, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, gang, who knows? This might be the one thing that'll keep your grandma alive. (laughs) Or kill her. (laughs) Dickatyourdoor.com makes 100% handcrafted chocolate in the shape of dicks. What more do you want? You can send them anonymously or grow some balls and put your name on it. They also make prank greeting cards that make fuck noises when you open them. Nice. A little squeaky squeaky when you open a car, huh? Put a C note in there and a little bit of fucking. (laughs) So check out dickatyourdoor.com, and if you use the promo code GARBAGE, you'll save 15% on possibly the most delicious chocolate dick you'll ever have in your mouth. Unfortunately, we can't say the same about Nana. You know what I mean? Yeah, who? uh... (laughs) Gang, once again, that's dickatyourdoor.com, and use promo code GARBAGE to save 15%. Now back to the show. Kippy? Hmm. Okay. Have you ever saved? Let's see here. Actually, any of your family members ever own a pontoon boat? Wait, say it again. Any of your family members ever own a pontoon boat? Oh, own one? No. (laughs) Fucking partied on one. Hell yes. I've I've definitely partied on pontoon. Dude, nothing's better than a couple of cold 30 packs and a pontoon boat and high tide. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) Take that thing out in open waters. Try to cross the channel with it. It's by far the trashiest boat. The funnest, but the trashiest, because it's just for people. You can't fish. Yeah. You can't, like, water ski on it. It's just for people getting fucked up in the bay, and it's awesome. In the shade. Yeah. In the shade. <laughs> yeah. Some of them even have toilets on them, like the pop-up, uh, you, like, shit in a bucket. My brother, when I first moved to California, he thought it'd be a good idea to buy this shitty RV. I mean, it was a <laughs> shitty RV. He was so stoked to drive me across country in it. We're gonna put an extra battery in it and play PlayStation. I was like, this thing ain't gonna run, dude. I gotta make it, it out of the county, dog. PlayStation. It, did. it didn't. It never went anywhere. <laughs> oh, that's fucking. Uh, I love the dream, though. I'm going to get this. We're going to get a fucking yeah. PlayStation and cruise. You got to love the dreamer mentality. <laughs> so funny. We're going to get like a Springsteen song. We're getting out, baby. <laughs> gonna get this RV, road. get this nope. camper popping and go. <laughs> uh. On a personal note, we've been going over. Uh, this has been a big controversy this week on Twitter. How do you feel? Because I want I want to know what like what all this has done to you and like what your habits are like now. Do you feel it's garbage to brush your teeth in the shower? No, no, oh, I don't. Nice. I listen. I don't. Here's when I I do it once in a while, and it's if I'm doing it in the morning when I wake up. If I'm going to look, you want to know about me? I like to shower at night. I don't like to get up and shower in the morning. I shower before I go to bed. I get up. And then I'll wash my face and stuff like that. Unless I sweat real bad tonight, I don't shower in the morning. Uh, but when I do, I brush my teeth in the shower because I like to multitask. I like to get shit done. Mm. There you go. Spoken like a gentleman. That fucking ends that debate right no, now. No, it's still brushing your me teeth out. in the shower is good. No, Why he doesn't do you? it all the it's time. Right it's too dirty for me. I mean, there's people. You know, who knows what's going on in the shower? People are washing their ass. People are peeing. It's all seen in there, right? <laughs> Are you laying down and brushing your teeth? (laughs) 
I'm a big bath kind of guy. I don't oh, know if you picked up on that. You're brushing your teeth in the bath. <laughs> now that's a fucking <laughs> other story <laughs> right there. <laughs> Running it under the faucet uh, while you're filling it up. Shaving that's your legs. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's All right. a good one. I got one now. Let's see. Let's see. You know, is there currently a purple crown royal bag in your home today? Nah, no, no crown royals. Okay. The big the thing about people saving those bags is that's a real garbage move. People think that's fancy, so they're like, I can't throw this out. I gotta put some coins or golf tees in here or something. Yeah, or some dominoes or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about a TV tray? Are there is there a set of TV trays in your house right now? No TV trays. Okay. No, but, I, but I'll be honest with you, I'd love to have it. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys know a guy <laughs> that delivers out to LA, hook me up. Uh, Where do you normally eat your eat your meals? Will you will you will, when you like say when you have your daughter? Will you set up like you know it's dinner time and do it at the table, or will you rock it in front of the TV? With my daughter at the table, solo in front of the TV. Yeah, nice. nothing's better than that. And what's your favorite thing to cook for yourself? Oh man, I I don't know. I, I, my crab cake. I like the I like the grill, but if I'm gonna cook, I, the crab cake I make is probably the best thing to make for myself. But I Wait, also you, like I go to the seafood market and I just grab shrimp and I'll take them home and steam them up real. It takes five minutes to throw some old bay on some shrimp, steam them up. They're great. A little man, beer, a little water. Classy. You grill for yourself. Yeah, I love the. I, I I'm just saying when you say cook, I grill more than I cook. You know okay. what I mean? I'm not a. I'm not. I don't bake. I'm not a desserts guy. But uh, <laughs> see, Sickler uh, in there making I'll a bunt cake. Italian. Dish. I'll bake some pasta. I like to take um, uh, Fra Diablo spicy sauce, put it in a little baking dish, and then cover it with some Italian seasonings and mozzarella and shrimp, and make shrimp Fra Diablo like that. Oh, oh, that's spicy. Damn. I think this guy's all fucking class yeah, now. Me too. That's fucking two I, big I, points I right there. Little. My I man, if you it. have enough self confidence to fucking grill for yourself, that's fucking that's a man right there. I'll tell you that. That's all right. I got one. Uh, wait, this is sorry. What was that? I was saying it's easier. I just think it's easier to throw something on a fire and cook it real quick. Yeah. No, I got you. Um, I would just order Chinese and sit there like a big pig and watch fucking <laughs> the office. I yeah, do well, that too. I do that too. <laughs> Foley, well, if you're growing in your one bedroom apartment in Queens, I think there's <laughs> I think there's issues. Um, what kind of jarred tomato sauce will you buy? And will jarred you? tomato sauce. That's a yes, I will. Um, and I really, really, really love Rayos. Um, what you got Rayos the, money? Holy guy. shit, this guy's rich. They're the they're the one I will go for. And if you that's look at class. their ingredients. And it's it's they're the best. I mean, that's they've taken the stigma out of fucking ragu and all yeah. that. Yeah, that that's shook. the Cadillac, dude. That's the Cadillac. The Nothing's better than that. I'm Damn. always my my mom would never have bought Rayos because it's fucking like ten dollars a bottle, and I get I get pushback from my girl when we go into the grocery store if I try to spend a little money on fucking pasta sauce. But Rayos, I always had a stigma with because I knew that they were fucking overcharging us from the jump. They are. I mean, that's like 10, 15 bucks. And you start getting in the fucking vodka sauce, you got to write a check. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you got to start Dude, moving some things awesome. around. You get a picky eater as a child, right? She loves this spaghetti, but I've convinced her, her mom and I have convinced her that this one Rayo sauce is the sauce at the restaurant. So that's oh. the only fucking sauce she'll eat. But I'm all right with it because it's two of us going at it. You know yeah. what I mean? And I don't do I don't do pasta that much that a ten a, a nine dollar bottle of sauce is it's all right. I make that shit stretch, you know. I'm saying I'm using it in pasta and in the shrimp. I'm making it stretch. <laughs> this guy's versatile. I've not, not forgotten my garbage roots. <laughs> You're all class nowadays. Do you put a little bit of water in the in the in the jar and shake it up to get the last little bit? I don't. Yeah. Really? I gotta Rubber? No, I got a rubber scraper. Those rubber scrapers are the sh they'll get everything out. Ooh, this guy's fucking classy. I know, man. <laughs> Holy Man. shit, right, dude? Rayos. Nobody's ever Nobody's responded ever with Rayos. Me. Yeah, <laughs> Rayos off the fucking jump. You got your act together. What for grocery sure. store do you shop at now? Ralph's, just mostly Ralph's. Okay, Good. all right. Ralph's I'm loyal to the grocery store that's closest to me. To be honest, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. 
And Ralph's is right up the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do you feel about the rotisserie chicken at the supermarket? Will you dabble in a rotisserie chicken? You like a roto? I like a roto, but I've fucked with it only a few times yeah. from the market. Yeah, it's it's good to... And plus, if I'm being honest, I'm wasting most of it because I just like the breast meat. Yeah, me too. There ain't <laughs> nothing but dude. If they're like four ninety nine, you get a perfectly uh, cooked bird. It's I'm fucking, a skin guy. I like the like, skin. I slice it real thin. I like to slice it real thin and then make little. I love sandwiches too. Oh much. come on, you're talking to two sandwich guys over here, right? Well, you put some chips on that sandwich. You a chip on the sandwich guy? I this am. I'm fries on the burger, chips and pretzels on the salad. I like that crunch. Oh, chips yeah, and pretzels? Well, or. I don't. Yeah. I didn't mean to get. Holy but shit, I pretzels on a sandwich. Oh, yeah, dude. I do turkey and cheese with a little bit of hers pretzels on there. Good yeah. fucking oh, night. Oh, I know what I'm that, doing tonight. That's exactly it. Turkey and cheese or ham and cheese with some pretzels on top. It's fantastic. <laughs> dude, ain't nothing better. It's, a little, it's like panko breading, you know what I mean? A little bit of zest for you. It is. Good crunch, a little salt. Delicious. Oh, it's the salt that does it, man. Ah, oh, I love it. All right, I got one. Now, I assume a gentleman <laughs> such as yourself would not partake in any kind of business such as this, but I have to ask the questions, so if I offend, I apologize. But when was the last time, or have you ever paid with anything with a money order? Yeah, um, it's been Damn. a minute, but when... I feel like when I first moved to California, when I got an apartment, they made you get a money order back then. All right. Yeah, that, that's okay. Um, shit like that. But I've never paid for something outside of like uh, some sort of registration or application for with a money order. No. All right. You're not dropping the rent off or the mortgage off in a fucking money no. order from 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me either. Uh, shout out to my landlord. And just, to, <laughs> just to follow up to that. Uh, I think this is garbage. I think Kevin disagrees with me. But are you a cash back guy? Will you get cash back when you make a purchase? What do you What do you mean? Actually, at the register? Yeah. yeah. Only if I need it. I try not to use cash as much these days because I'm just using my card for points and bullshit for travel and all that crap. So I try not to dick with cash, but. These days with that coronavirus, I've been doing things like haircuts and, you know, people like to work a little bit of cash these days. Yeah, you know? cash all- is king. Cash, I feel like I'm in the 20s again. You know what I mean? Whacking everybody yep. off with a couple of fajoles and keep it moving. Cash and gold, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. Pretty fucking classy, you Mr. Might, Sickler. You're, yeah, dude, this guy's fucking bulletproof yeah. now. You might you you're like you you say you grill a lot. This is we're not grilled guys. I was trying I went we rented a I rented a house a couple of weeks ago up upstate and I was I was the grill guy and I don't know what I'm doing. What's the classiest kind of grill? Is it charcoal or propane? And what do you got? What's what's way in here? If you're a, if you're a purist, then charcoal is definitely the way to go. But I I live in an apartment here in L.A. I mm-hmm. can't have a charcoal yeah. grill, so it's got to be propane. But there's nothing like. Just the smell and the taste of something that comes off those hot coals. Done Nothing right, like man. It's fucking a okay. See, I would say that's more garbage. That propane is classier because when I think of charcoal, I think of the couple of times that we went out to like some kind of function at a public park, and you know how they have like the ready-made grills at public parks. Sometimes I always yeah. looked at people that were grilling out there with charcoal like they were fucking trash. Well. Two things. They are trash. <laughs> <laughs> but they're trash that doesn't have a grill. So yes, exactly. Doing what they can. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're doing what they can. <laughs> uh, but propane, you know, it's just, it's, it's cheating, I guess. If you're yeah. going to heat those coals, you got to heat them up right. You got to get them nice and white. Also, charcoal. Plus, most people treat it like trash. They spray a gallon of fucking lighter fuel yeah. on top of that shit and then blast that motherfucker. You know, it's fun. That's fun for trash. Fireworks so there... and things. Like that. Trash are big into fireworks. Are you are you into fireworks? I like fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> the sip. I like fireworks. 
My brother in Delaware gets like the legit ones and he'll fire three or four of those motherfuckers off. And it's just like, it, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. You should add to your questions. I don't know. Maybe you have this, but for trash people, any fireworks injuries, you should add that to your list of questions. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, we've, we've, we've touched on that. I almost lost an eye to a black cat when I was like seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught some shrapnel. <laughs> but th- it was that the oldest trick in the book. Oh, I lit it. The fuse went out. All of a sudden, the fuse is back on, and my buddy Johnny's holding. He gets hot potato at that point, and I was the loser. What was it this year? I, I know it was the pandemic, but did they loosen up the laws on fireworks? Because I feel like every night in New York, it was like fucking. It was like the Bay of Pigs. Yeah, it was bad, dude. It was. Dude, it has. It still hasn't stopped. It's been. It was every night for the, and I mean, we were talking about cannons, like oh boom, yeah, big <laughs> dude, it was like D Day in my neighborhood every fucking night. I was oh. waking up at four in the morning, like I we were taking mortar fire. Fucking saving private yeah. foley over here. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! All right, we just got a couple more questions. We're gonna get you out of here. This has been absolutely fantastic, Kippy. What do you got? Do Do you have any pets now? Yes. Um, this well, could make or break you. It's with my daughter's mom and my daughter over there is the cat who I, okay. I've never been a cat guy, but this fucking cat, I love this fucking cat. This cat's like every woman in my life sees me, runs over, cuddles me, cuddles, wants me to pet, pet, pet. And then after a while, just turns on me, bites the <laughs> fuck out of me, claws me, makes me bleed. And then and it comes back five minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I can't fuck with them. But people that say that, it's always a guy. It's always somebody. I'm not a cat guy, but they get one that they they end up liking. Got me. She got me. And plus, she's internet famous. When my stepson was like, God, I don't know, seven or eight, um, the cat was laying up on this little balcony, like this little walkway area where his mom lives, and he rode his bike by and put his hand up and gave her a high five, and she straight up high fived him. And that cat's got more views. I think I've seen that. Ever- that's my son, my stepson, cat high five. I'll never yeah. outdo that. Damn, he knows famous cats outdo. too? This guy's checking all the boxes. Yeah, I like got him. got A-listers cats in his family. family. <laughs> that cat's pulling weight, bro. You don't pull weight in this family. You're gone. <laughs> yeah. Learn from an early <laughs> age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Body's got to pull their weight. Fucking wide receivers and cool cat tricks. I like it. I always thought it was trashy, though. Remember when you were a kid and the, on the news at the end, they would show like the squirrel that could surf? He'd be like, what yeah. the fuck? Dude, Who's I've, met, this I've thing? met that squirrel that water skis at a boat show in AC. <laughs> and dude, Peanuts knows his way around a fucking above ground pool. <laughs> he was all coked up at the keto table. <laughs> they were feeding him ketamine, but he, he fucking, he knew what he was. He was doing a one hand, the wave. One uh, hand. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. All right, Kippy, what do you got? <sighs> all right, this is, I, I saw this. This is a Baltimore thing. And I, I, this is bananas to me. Do you do sauerkraut at Thanksgiving? I don't know. What? Don't. Okay. That's a Baltimore no. thing, though, right? Uh, do you know that? I, 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 to answer your question, I don't know. I grew up in an Italian family. So for oh, us, yeah. all traditional Easter was ham, Thanksgiving was turkey, but we had lasagna, stuffed shells, baked ziti, <laughs> all that. So we never had some fucking sauerkraut. Well, somebody <laughs> was smacked. <laughs> your yeah, grandma would have slapped the shit out of you. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't ask that question to she a She would have spit like on the this. floor. <laughs> <laughs> that question Sour did not crowd. come from me. I just want that on the record right now. Sour. But I'll crowd. tell you a southern thing that we like is French fries with gravy, like brown gravy. Oh, Thanksgiving yeah. gravy. Come on. Yeah. That's, I think that's, that's a fat guy thing. I, do, I fucking love it, too. That's fantastic. <laughs> Throw a little cheese on there. Good night. Mm hmm. Kippy, you got anything else? Uh, let's see here. I think I got one more for you. <laughs> Anyone in your family ever own like a trick remote control car? Like one that hit like a top speed that you had to fix and, you know, you jumped it off like a fucking baseball yeah, field or I'll something. Just, I'll tell you, not the RC cars, but <clears throat> we had um, a quasi uncle. I guess he wasn't really an uncle, but an uncle. <laughs> Which is always was trashy, older. but they're the best. They're sometimes awesome dudes. Forget about it. He was into the RC planes. He was into Ooh. the planes. So he oh. got us into a plane briefly. Briefly. That's we got cool. into planes. That's not too bad. I had a Damn. helicopter that never made it off the ground the one time. Oh, yeah. I lost a drone a few weeks ago with my nephew. That thing took off. I was in some high grass. <laughs> I was like, that's it for the drone. Come on. I'll get you a BB gun. Fuck that. 
Yeah. Holy shit. That's it for me, man. That's it. I got to say, let me ask you this, because uh, a, uh, a past guest on the show a couple weeks ago stunned us with something. Uh, comedian Shane Torres asked us the mm-hmm. question. So I'm going to pass that question on to uh, you yeah. just to close out. Now, you're all class in my book, but what would Thanks. you say is the classiest thing that you do? Does anything stick out in your mind? That you try to make a point to do or, you know, something that you're like, I'm treating myself with this type thing. I, I'm being a dad. Um, ah, you know, you my go. dad was a great dad, but I only got him for a short amount of time. So I'm trying to do what I can to make sure my ass sticks around so I can be, you know, here and, and you know, enjoy uh, my kids. This guy's say fucking aces. Oh, Jesus shit. Christ. What a fucking answer. If I get married, will you be my best man? Yeah, right. I just want to hear the speech. <laughs> fucking not a dry eye in the house when Sickler gets done. That was that was a fucking Keanu Reeves. And he Reeves knows CPR right for there. when you croak. That's fucking smart. <laughs> <laughs> you got a better chance of living than dying with me, though. Yeah, dude. He's got this guy's putting up solid fucking num- hey, Dude, first of all, he's a gem of a fucking guy. Woo! Sat through all the tech issues we had, figures it out, does it on the fly, saves lives. Damn. Real, I mean, this guy's fucking, yeah, man, flawless in my book. You, 100% you had a... class, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Sickler. Yeah, Holy buddy, thank shit. you so much. I appreciate the official uh, pulling here. I appreciate it. Thank you for the crowd work, too. I of course, that. brother. Now, is there anything you want the folks out there to know before you let you get out of here? Just make sure uh, you subscribe to my podcast, The Honeydew. Go over to uh, ryansickler.com, thehoneydewpodcast.com. Follow me on social media at Ryan Sickler. It's all there. And, um, yeah, that's it. Buddy, thank you awesome. so much. Thank Kippy, you so what do you much. got for him? Yeah, guys, same thing. Just make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Uh, full video available on YouTube. You can subscribe there as well. And if you want a gas digital uh, subscription, use promo code AYG, get a free trial, get all the bonus, the live streams, the chat. You get the episodes before they come out. And plus, we get to wet our beaks a little bit. You know what I mean? A couple of bucks in Kippy and Foley's pockets. Yeah, a little bit of cash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gang, thank you so much. Mr. Sickler, thank you again, buddy. All class. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you both. Seriously, I really appreciate you having me. Sorry about all that tech stuff at the top. Nah, Nah, buddy. Thank you so much. Guys, we will see you next week. Peace.